GPHA. 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 I'm so excited this evening. And I've been so impressed with the speeches given and crown it all with the dancing of that young little lady. Let's give the dancers another hand. If you come from Ghana and you see kids born here dance like this, then you admire Ghanaians. It, it, it looks like she was trained in Manchia Palace. <laughs> because she's doing it original. I, I give that little girl my own personal donation for a hundred dollars. <laughs> Uniting to make an impact is your theme for your first conference. Now, I believe that this is an important theme, economically and politically. We must certainly, various professional groups, make an impact to take Ghana at the point within our lifetime. The way things go, on in Ghana. Professionals in the system should not be happy. At the moment, at the World Bank, they've introduced a special study on reversibility of the economy, a Ghana case study. Because they could not imagine that a country called Ghana, and I have to give you the figures and bear with me, in 2000, when President Kufuor took over, growth was 3.7%. Then 2001, it went to 4.2, then 4.5, then 5.2. Till Kufuor left, 2008, growth was 9.1, the highest in Africa. So that for continuous eight years, the economy grew. And for the first time, Sudan economy has grown even above 10% before. But what was remarkable about the first term was that there were consistent increase in growth every year. That is how you generate employment. So having, and that was without oil. We discovered the oil in 2007, but we didn't touch it, we couldn't exploit it until 2011. Then the economy grew at 14.4, the highest growth in Africa and in fact per year in the world. Because the oil has kicked in late 2010 and 2011 were 14.4. That is how the country should go. Because you see, no matter what you do, you should get the microeconomic indicators right for any meaningful development to take place. Now, between 2011 and 2016, the economy declined. The growth came down with constant annual production of oil from 14.4 till 2016, 3.7. So the World Bank doesn't understand. Here's an economy that is adding oil production every year, having reached 14.4 and you decline consistently to 3.7. It's important when you talk about professional development, when you talk about growth, when you talk about making an impact to get the milieu right. Because you can't make an impact when your growth is that erratic, an erratic in the wrong direction. So as a nation, we need to do certain things. I favor, and I'm working hard at it, a situation where we put a law in place that anchors your deficit. <clears throat> you cannot come and allow deficit to be above a certain limit. You cannot come and borrow above a certain amount in relation to your GDP. 
There must be a law. And there must be sanctions attached to the law. So that no matter who comes in power, CPP, NDC, MPP, you are guided by certain fundamental economic principles. And that will protect the whole country and the whole economy. We have under the banking law, for instance, that the country should not be allowed to borrow more than 10% of the previous total domestic revenue. So if your domestic revenue last year, 2016, was 100, then 2017, you can't borrow more than 10. And we chose those figures carefully so that they will be available for the previous performance of your revenue. So the figures are there. And that law, I would say, I piloted it and got it passed under the Banking Act. But we had a situation where the governor of the central bank allowed the country to borrow about 43% about the domestic revenue. And I don't believe you should do that and enjoy yourself as a governor. We, 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 can't, we can't allow it. Elsewhere, there are certain guidelines which everybody comes to observe. And I think it's time, Ghana, we did that. So that your uniting to make an impact, you make a positive economic impact because you are also being assisted by the microeconomic environment. And what is painful is that when you get growth go down to about 3.7 and you want to raise it up, everybody in the country sacrifices. When you have inflation at say 16 and you want to bring inflation down to 9, the sacrifices involved are many and varied. And we shouldn't put the, 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 the population through that kind of suffering. I call it. That's why I think we need what I called Fiscal Responsibility Act that will state specifically that you cannot have a deficit in excess of 5%. It is there in law and the central bank are there to guide it and people can suffer for it because they have grossly abused the Fiscal Responsibility Act. And therefore, you would need a very powerful Fiscal Responsibility Council, a council made up of eminent Ghanaians. Your group can be one of them. So that at every quarter of the year, we are looking at what is happening to the deficit, that we do not pass a certain threshold. Because my fear is that when we allow it unguided, when we allow it to go based on the government's whims and caprices, it puts the country into a level that makes it very difficult for us to consistently grow. So growth had come down from 14.4 to 3.7 in 2016. People are complaining in Ghana last year and this year. And it's because we want to get the macro environment right. Growth in 2017 was 8.5%, the highest in Africa. And we're going to keep the growth reasonably high to enable the system generate employment. But the sacrifices, people complain at home, I know you've heard it, is that you are trying to put certain things right. And in that process, people have to sacrifice. And it is not the best way to develop a country. I'm hoping that this time, the professional groups like yours will then have the amplitude to grow and develop and have the relevant impact. The government has chosen four thematic areas which runs through everything we do and at cabinet every day we announce them. One, there should be microeconomic stability and debt sustainability. Normally, 
the threshold of debt sustainability is 70% of GDP. We inherited 72.8. We brought it now to 68.5. And it's gone up since last two weeks to about 70.8. Because the government has to borrow to stabilize the financial sector. I'm sure you've read elsewhere about what is happening with our banks. To enable government to provide guarantee for all depositors in these banks, the government has to go publicly to borrow to do that. You can't afford a bank that has been licensed and innocent Ghanaians haven't put their money in there for them to lose all the money. The pain to be inflicted on innocent citizens will be too much. The government rather take the whip. And that's what we are doing. But I believe investigations are going on. If there have been any serious infractions, people will be punished. And people should be punished elsewhere. Because as the details come out, you get chilled. We must put the system right. We must have a situation in Ghana, no matter which political party comes to power, we must obey certain minimum standards. Doesn't matter. Obviously, political power will change. It happens everywhere. And if you look at all over the world, in the most developed economies, there are always two prominent political parties. That's how it goes. Except, of course, in the communist world, like Russia and the rest, where the supremacy of the Communist Party reigns. But elsewhere in Germany, in the US, your own, in Nigeria, in Ghana, the power is tossed between two major political parties. Call it left and right. But in Africa, our left is more center than left. <laughs> and our right is close to center. So sometimes you don't really see much difference in terms of ideology between the political parties in Nigeria, in Sierra Leone, in Cote d'Ivoire, in Ghana. The, the, the differences are not that remarkable. The number two pillar is infrastructure development. For any country to also develop unimpeded, you need the infrastructure right. And one of your key infrastructure is power. But the whole industrialization is seriously undermined if we do not have adequate power to support industrialization. And therefore, naturally, we went through a very three and a half years of continuous doom so. And our first cabinet, the decision is no matter how much it costs, we should bring Dumsor to an end. And we did. Because the pain you inflict on the economy through inadequate source of power supply is huge. The whole country, every household has a generator. And at the end of the day, the cost of running the generators is even far more than the cost of building another hydro dam. So we must find a way of making sure that you have adequate power, rain or shine. At the moment we have, and we are going to continue, we are now pushing emphasis on renewable energy. All Africa is blessed with a lot of sunshine. And therefore, if you can get power from sunshine, solar energy, what are we waiting for? Because we can take many of our power systems for schools, hospitals, in certain areas, and push all of them on solar. And it works. And the Minister of Energy has been asked to draw a plan where the ministries or government distance will be on solar after a date. I won't tell you the date yet, but we have given the date and we're going to work to it so that all the ministries 
have to go solar. But two thirds of our land has enough sunshine throughout the year. And if we do it right, we should get a lot of power through the blessings of the Almighty God. An overview of the pharmaceutical industry in Ghana. I just wanted to put you into the whole milieu of the economy before I come to your area of pharmacy. Because we have selected three sectors at cabinet which we want to emphasize immediately for promotion and development. And it includes the pharmacy production. It includes making of drugs. If there is any professional group in Ghana that has made it individually, it is the pharmacy profession. All my contemporaries at our time, and I won't tell you when I left the university, I went to come and my University of Science and Technology. All our contemporaries who chose the line of pharmacy production and privatization, who left the government service and went on their own, have made it. And any time we are doing anything, they literally finance the rest of us. <coughs> so I will not be surprised when your group begins to make enough to finance the rest of us back home. <laughs> the practice of pharmacy in Ghana predates colonial rule. And right about 1930s, pharmacy was being practiced. When the University of Science and Technology was established, one of the premier faculties was pharmacy. And that has been very, very, very useful to the system. And the faculty has been consistently so powerful that as a minister of education, I have to put a quota to prevent foreigners taking over our pharmacy department at Kamikoma University. Because Nigerians and Ceylonians and everybody wanted to do pharmacy in Ghana. And they were pushing out our students. And the school authorities, the university authorities, prefer foreign students because of the fees. It's far more attractive to have foreign students than to have Ghanaians. So I sat now with the vice chancellor and everyone and said, look, for the pharmacy, this percentage must be Ghanaian. It's not negotiable. If you want to expand, you can go ahead and expand and get more foreigners to make more money. But we, no matter how much you do it, a certain percentage must be Ghanaians. It shows that the pharmacy department, the faculty, has been quite successful in attracting West Africans in particular. And I think some of you in this room are products of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology Pharmacy Faculty. Can I show by raise of hands those who had a benefit of Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology? Thank you very much. We have decided that we must push the pharmacy as a growth pool in West Africa. What is happening is that a number of pharmacy companies in Ghana are exporting to West African countries. And they've made a name for themselves in terms of quality of drugs. In 2003, at the meeting of ECOWAS Ministers of Finance, my colleague in Nigeria was coughing and he called his bodyguard to buy her cough mister. And I overheard her mention Ghana, so I didn't understand why. So I, I turned to her and said, look, what are you saying about Ghana again? <laughs> he said, oh yeah, I was telling my bodyguard to make sure that he buys made in Ghana drug. Because 
when you talk about cough mixture, the best comes from Ghana. So there was that realization in that way back in Abuja in Nigeria about drugs made in Ghana. And during the cocktail, the Liberian Minister of Finance said the same. The Côte d'Ivoire Minister of Finance said, oh, we are that we are drugs. They are consistently good. So I think pharmacy is one area, or drug production is one area. We must consciously support the conquer West Africa. And that is what we are aiming at. And the West African population, West African population is not a Ghana 30 million. It's 370 million. We are looking at about ECOWAS population. So that's really, that's a big market. And so the government has decided that as part of our one this, this one factory, we should provide a stimulus package for certain industrialization. A minimum 10% should belong to the pharmacy. So the idea is that we identified about 80 companies and a minimum 10 should belong to the pharmacy section of this. So we are consciously trying to help your colleagues and yourselves. Because those of you here should have no difficulty coming to take over the production line in Ghana. Because you are where the research is. Because you are exposed to the latest practices. Because you know who produces what and you can link with them and bring them home to produce. Young men and women, the advantage you have over those Ghanaians in Ghana is that your environment is far more advanced technologically. Your environment is far more exposed to research. Your environment is modernized. And what you need is to avoid this Ghanaian individualistic approach to things. The lawyers in Ghana don't have a problem joining in groups. Why? Because in law, there are people who specialize in criminal law. There are others who specialize in civil law. There are others who even in the, within the civil they will specialize in land litigation. So if you want to have an all-inclusive chamber, then you need a minimum of about three. Because these cases come in their multiple. I believe that in pharmacy, there are also other specialization within it that makes it complete. Engineers also don't have a problem because even at the study, from the third year, we have electrical specific, we have mechanical specific, we have civil specific, now we have the hydrocarbons. So, if you want to put up a good engineering consultancy, it cannot only be mechanical. Otherwise, you're going to miss all the civil works. Now, because of the hydrocarbon, because of the petrochemical industry you are in, you also want petroleum engineering. So the engineers are also coming together in numbers. <coughs> I'm not sure about the pharmacists how they cooperate with each other and get into numbers. And those of you here should lead the way. Because the best way to conquer the West African market is to make sure that you have a group. And when I say a group, not individuals. The whole thing is a specialization. The whole thing is business. And business must be such that you satisfy the market. Pharmacy fundamentally must develop along a service industry. You are providing a health service of the time. And it's a chain. It's production, it's marketing, it's this. And you can't have all the expertise in one person. So you become very effective 
if you put yourself into smaller groups of different aspects and backgrounds and identify some of the niche areas here within your environment you have advantage so mr president what are you doing to organize yourselves in groups with a view to taking over the west african market i'm talking to you about i want to attract you finally not to make this place your final destination this is not your home your final destination should be where your final destination should be where your final destination should be where so prepare yourself towards moving to ghana and in a big way and those of your seniors and your colleagues who are into production have made it take advantage of the, this environment we have the exposure which is not available to your colleagues in ghana and submerge individual interests to the benefit of uniting to make an impact. That impact, I believe, as the President said, should be a positive impact within the economic setting. Sometimes I feel strongly and I've been encouraging my grandchildren to look at pharmacy as the profession to do. Because somehow it's a very old profession. 